This is the Awkward GM Corbin, and today I'm going to talk about prep. How much time should you as a GM take to prepare for your campaigns or one-shots or any other type of game that you're running? Today's sponsor is Warlock Sanctum Games, professional GMs for hire. Please check them out in the description below. One of my players recently asked me how long does it take me to prepare for running a session, and what I told them was I don't. I don't take notes, I don't have anything really as far as prep work goes, and this is very true for my West Marches open city style game called Chronicles of Boston. Now, for that, I have a list of plot hooks, most of which are a few sentences long, and that's all I have day of to go by when a bunch of players say that they want to play a game today. So I don't do a lot of prep for that. But for my long-term campaigns, such as my Changeling Lost game, I actually spent a lot of time planning it out. I have multiple Google Sheets and Google Docs, rather, filled with information about the world, uh, a list of every NPC that my players could come up with, as well as some NPC names that don't have any characteristics associated with them or personalities so that I can use them later on in case my players talk to a park car park attendant with who I haven't given a name to yet. So that's what I do for my long my long term campaigns. For one shots, I like to use those as a way of pitching a new game to my players so that we can do a long term campaign using those rules. So oftentimes I'll do a lot of prep work up ahead of time just so that I can get the basics of the game figured out, but also I can show off stuff that my players might not see in a normal campaign session. Usually I'll have the players have conflicting side missions with each other, a little bit more PvP than a normal campaign might have, because these characters don't really need to survive by the end of the session. They're usually pre-gens or quickly made characters that my players have no attachment to. Now, when I ran con games and organized play games, I did a lot of prep work. The problem with running organized play games in particular is that they're very detailed modules that usually have stuff hidden in various corners that need to be highlighted and such so that you know to bring them up during game. A good example of this was I was running a D&D Adventures League mo module at TotalCon, and when I got there, I didn't realize there's supposed to be a ghost that is helping the players along finding out what's going on. So instead, that entire subplot was completely ripped out of my game and the players didn't even know it was happening. And so they were going through what was basically a standard dungeon crawl. That's why now I will go through modules, uh, print them out, and highlight them to hell so that I make sure that I am presenting the module in a way that the author intended, or at least as close to the way that the author intended without completely rewriting it. If you're running a pre-made adventure like Curse of Strahd, I, I honestly don't know what you would do in that situation, because for me I would be highlighting the book, and I know a lot of people would see that as sacrilegious, so I probably wouldn't do that. I would probably have to have a notebook or a Google Sheet with all the stuff that I want to make sure that my players go through. But um, honestly, I've, I've never done any of those long-term campaign modules or adventures, so I'm not really one who could talk to that. I often like to have my own stuff prepared if I'm doing a long-running campaign. I have run paid games in the past, and I wanted to put a really good foot forward in doing that, so I did a lot of prep work so that my players felt like they were getting their money's worth. And if you want to get your money's worth, you can check out Warlock Sanctum Games because they've definitely put in a lot of effort into their game prep as well. Uh, when I was part of a session, the GM, Matt at the time, had voice modulars set up so that he could change which characters were talking on the fly and make it sound even better than if he was just putting on an accent. So if you're interested in being a player in a paid game, check out Warlock Sanctum Games, link in the description below. Now, my advice to GMs, both new and old, is number one, 
always prepare to your comfort level. You're running a session for players, and if you want it to be the best session ever, and you need to feel more confident, and planning makes you feel more confident, do it. Number two, this might just be for me, but quick reference materials are essential for running a game in my opinion you could do all the prep work that you need to do beforehand but if you can't look at the notes and immediately grab the important information within a few seconds your notes are too complex to be used during the game think of it like this you are a kid in high school who's writing a book report on the Lord of the Rings. You can read through the entirety of Lord of the Rings, but at the end of the day, when you're writing the report, you're having trouble remembering what's going on. You're going to want to have a small sheet, usually about a page is what I go for, but if you can easily flip through more than that, feel free. But have a page of cliff notes that you can go to and reference during game. The reason for having quick reference notes is the ability to have access to the important information quickly and concisely. I hope this advice was very helpful to you. Now I have to run off and run one of my West Marches games in the Chronicles of Boston, and that session is going to be called the Silent Laboratory, where a laboratory for this company has gone silent and no one knows what's going on. I honestly don't know what's going on either. I don't know who's the villain, I don't know who are the people that went missing, and I don't know really what characters my players are bringing, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a good one.